Next problem. A rigid container with a total volume of 10 meter cube is separated into two equal volumes by a membrane. So, let us draw this also. So, that is a membrane. Okay, this is totally V equal to 10 meter cube. So, equal volumes that means here it will be first in the first state it will be 5 meter cube and here also 5 meter cube. Initially, volume on one side of the membrane contains nitrogen. So, let us take left side contains nitrogen at 5 bar and 1000 Kelvin and the other side is evacuated. Nothing is there. Evacuated. The membrane, this is the membrane, a thin membrane like only aluminum foil, okay, an aluminum foil and uh, we can rupture it basically. Once the aluminum foil is ruptured, what happens? There is a rapid expansion of the nitrogen from the left side to the entire volume. Okay. The member ruptures and finally there is a thermal equilibrium with the ambient. So, ambient temperature is 300 Kelvin. From 1000 Kelvin, there is a thermal equilibrium. That means the rigid container is not insulated. There is a heat transfer. Finally, there is a thermal equilibrium. So, T2 will be equal to 300 Kelvin equal to T ambient. That is it. What is the final pressure and the net entropy change for the universe? That is what is asked. Okay. Entropy change of the universe. Obviously, it is an irreversible process. You have to understand that rapid expansion takes place. Correct? Rapid expansion. So, irreversible. So, irreversible process occurs. So, let us say R for nitrogen will be equal to 8314 which is the universal gas constant in joule per kilo mole Kelvin divided by the molecular weight kg per kilo mole. So, that will be equal to 297 joule per kg Kelvin specific gas constant for nitrogen. Now, since gamma is given I can calculate Cv equal to what R nitrogen divided by gamma minus 1 which is equal to 742.5 joule per kg Kelvin Cp equal to 1039.5 that is nothing but what gamma R by gamma minus 1 joule per kg Kelvin ok. So, that is the expressions we have got uh, values. Now, V1 for the nitrogen is 5 meter cube which is given in the problem. P1 equal to 5 bar or 5 into 10 power 5 pascals. T1 equal to 1000 Kelvin. Okay, now, I can find the mass of the mass of the nitrogen will be equal to say just say m. m equal to what? I can use 5 into 10 power 5 into 5 PV by RT. R is 297 into T is 1000 which is equal to 8.4175 kg. So, that is the mass contained in the left side of the chamber initially. Finally, after the membrane ruptures what happens V2 becomes 10 meter cube the total volume nitrogen is now contained in the total volume and the T2 is given as 300 Kelvin equilibrium it is in equilibrium with ambient temperature so T2 also is given correct so the state what is the final pressure we can find by using this? So, let us apply the first law taking the rigid container as the system. Okay, here what 
q minus w equal to q minus w equal to delta u. Now, rigid container no volume change. So, work equal to 0 because what since delta v equal to 0. The entire container is now taken. So, q equal to delta u that is got from the first uh, this. So, now q equal to delta u equal to m into c v into t 2 minus t 1. T2 is known, T1 is known, M is known. So, we can calculate this as minus 4375 kilo joules. So, Q equal to minus 4375 kilo joules. That heat is obviously from 1000 Kelvin, temperature reduced to 300 Kelvin, correct. So, this is 300 Kelvin, this is 1000 Kelvin. So, obviously, the heat has to be rejected from the whatever system you consider to the ambient. So, this is negative that is done. Next is pressure P2 V2 equal to M R T2 which implies P2 what is P2 equal to mass M is 8.4175 kg into R is 297 into T2 is 300 Kelvin divided by V2 10 meter cube. So, that will be equal to 750 kilo Pascals. Okay. 750 kilo Pascals. I am just giving the units. So, now final pressure is got, heat interaction is got. Next is entropy change. Entropy change for the universe which is equal to delta s universe equal to delta s system plus delta s surroundings. Okay, what is delta s system? Delta s system will be equal to m into Cp ln T2 by T1 minus R ln V2 by V1. So, this we can get from TDS relationship, correct? So, recall TDS equal to dH minus VdP and we know PV equal to RT. Okay, now for the ideal gas. So, we can write dS equal to Cp dt Cp dt by t minus instead of v I can put rt by p. So, this is r dp by p. So, for, for the uh, ideal gas which is perfect Cp is constant. So, I can integrate this. So, we can say delta s will be equal to Cp ln t2 by t1 minus r ln p2 by p1. So, this is the expression I have used here. So, this is actually P2, this is sorry P2 by P1, P2 by P1. So, this is the expression I have used. So, now we know T1, T2, P2 is now calculated. So, P1, P2 also is known. So, from this I can calculate this as minus 5792 joule per Kelvin or minus 5.792 kilo joule per Kelvin. That is the systems. Okay, what is for surroundings? For surroundings, why is the entropy should change, change for surrounding? Because there is a heat transfer system rejects some heat. This heat is got by the surroundings. Surrounding temperature is constant at 300 Kelvin. So, Q surroundings divided by T surrounding that is the because of the heat transfer, entropy is transferred from the system to the surrounding. So, that is the entropy change for this. Otherwise, there is no internal irreversibility or anything here. So, this can be written as minus Q for the system divided by T surroundings. So, this is equal to 4375 by 300. 
which is equal to 14.58 kilo joule per kelvin that is the so what is delta s universe now add this to delta s system plus delta s surroundings which is equal to minus 5.792 plus 14.58 which is equal to 8.8.788 kilo joule per kelvin so you can find this the delta s of universe can be zero or it should be only positive so it is no positive so that means that this is a highly irreversible process because of this rapid expansion so you can see that there is a increase in entropy of the universe even though the system's entropy change is negative the contribution from the surrounding entropy change is very high here so that is the reason so if delta s universe comes to be negative then the process is not possible so either it should be zero delta s universe should be zero or it should be positive is the principle of increasing entropy so this is about this problem so nice problem where rapid expansion is there and uh, due to which the entropy actually increases for the universe then the ninth problem a perfect gas mixture so perfect gas means an ideal gas which has constant cp and cv so that is perfect gas containing 0.5 moles of nitrogen the ratio of specific heat is 1.4 molecular weight is 28 and uh, 0.5 moles of neon cp by cv is 5 by 3 molecular weight is 20 kg per kilo mole is expanded in an insulated turbine insulated turbine so let us draw the turbine here a gas mixture comes in that is 0.5 moles of nitrogen plus 0.5 moles of neon okay at 8 bar 300 kelvin is coming in this is the gas turbine okay so some work has to be done by the turbine so let us say that is this okay now what is the exit pressure so turbine to 1 bar the expansion from 8 bar to 1 bar here is 1 bar so mixture is expanded here and the isentropic efficiency of the turbine is given as 50% isentropic efficiency so you know that if i draw t s diagram okay this is say 1 bar uh, uh, constant pressure line 1 bar and this is 8 bar so now from 8 bar so this is say 300 kelvin the expansion this state inlet state or state 1 at the end okay then occurs like this to 1 bar so this is be the t2 yes and this is this state 2 yes where if there is an ideal expansion that means see normally the turbine is adiabatic insulated turbine is given so in adiabatic process there is no heat transfer that is entropy change due to heat transfer is not there so the entropy can change in an adiabatic process only due to the irreversibility okay now if i say that the expansion is also reversible so adiabatic and reversible it should be isentropic so that's what so s2 s will be equal to s1 why i am saying the state s2 s i am saying that the state 2 is yes, now isentropically arrived at so 2s yes means it is an isentropic state which is having the same enthalpy as the initial state 1 so the exit state and in inter inlet state are the have the same entropy now actual process will have some irreversibility so i cannot even show the process in a, a state diagram so i have to just show by dashed line like how to have shown here and this is the actual process state 2 now you can see that there is an increase in entropy from state 1 to state 
always irreversibility will cause an increase in entropy so now what is isentropic efficiency is the actual work developed by the turbine okay divided by the isentropic work ws is isentropic work divided by the divided by the turbine so now this can be written as h1 minus h2 divided by h1 minus h2s so this isentropic efficiency is given as 50% actually very pretty low 0.5 okay so now what is to be got calculate the entropy change of the mixture across the turbine that means from inlet to the outlet what is the entropy change that's what is asked it's a mixture which is entering in a gas turbine so that is the problem so after understanding the problem we will try to solve it here mole fractions we will first calculate for the mixture components for the nitrogen which is 0.5 mole divided by what total number of moles is 0.5 plus 0.5 okay equally equal moles are there initially 0.5 moles of nitrogen and 0.5 moles of neon so this will be 0.5 okay and the neon also will be same so x n e will be also 0.5 divided by 0.5 plus 0.5 so which is equal to 0.5 these are the mole fractions now for the mixture we have to arrive at the mixer mixture properties so individually i have molecular weight individually i have cp by cv etc correct that is the ratio but what is the molecular weight of the mixture that we can calculate molecular weight of the mixture will be equal to sigma xi m W i, which is equal to 0.5 into 28 plus 0.5 into 20, which is equal to 24 kilo gram per kilo mole. Okay, that is the molecular weight of the mixture. Now, from this, I can calculate the specific gas constant of the mixture as the universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight of the mixture, which is equal to 8314. Joule per joule per kilo mole Kelvin divided by twenty four kilogram per kilo mole, which is equal to three hundred and forty six point four two joule per kg specific gas constant. Okay. Now I can calculate the mole uh, mass fractions. See, there are several ways to do the mixing, mixing properties, mixer properties. I am just following one of this. Mole fractions can give you the mass fraction with the help of the molecular weights. So, what is that? Y n two will be equal to x n two into molecular weight of n two divided by molecular weight of mixture, which is equal to zero point five eight. Triple three. Similarly, I can calculate that of neon as zero point four one six six seven. So the molecular weight of the individual component of the mixture can be used to calculate the relationship between mole fraction and mass fraction. So once I get why I want mass fraction because I want to calculate the mixture properties like CV mix. CV mix is what CV mix equal to sigma Y I C V I. So now C V I I will calculate based upon mass basis. Okay, so C V for nitrogen I can calculate as what R of nitrogen divided by gamma of nitrogen minus one. So now the specific gas constant joule per kg Kelvin will come. So from this I can calculate. So now what is R of nitrogen will be equal to the universal gas constant divided by the Molecular weight, that is twenty-eight. Similarly, individual uh, CV for neon, I can calculate because that is eight three one four by twenty will be R divided by five by three minus one. Okay, so I can calculate the CV mix after calculating the individual CP and CV in terms of mass. That is here CV is 
calculated as joule per kg kelvin so it is per mass basis whenever there is a quantity per mass basis then mass fraction should be used for the weighted average that is the mixing property mixture property of the mixture will be sigma y i cv i on the other hand if i can calculate cv as joule per kilo mole kelvin then i can use xi okay so now it is straightforward for me to do this in the mass basis so i calculate using this cv mix equal to Six hundred and ninety two point eight three joule per kg Kelvin. Similarly, CP mix I can calculate as sigma yi CPI. So CP for nitrogen will be equal to gamma of nitrogen R of nitrogen divided by gamma nitrogen minus one. Here this is joule per kg Kelvin. So this. cp also will be in joule per kg kelvin so when i do this i get this value as 1039.25 joule per kg kelvin or you can also use cp mix will be calculated as r mix plus cv mix because cp minus cv equal to r for the ideal gas anything you can use either of this and get the value now after calculating the cp mix and cv mix now i calculate the gamma that is cp mix equal to what cp mix divided by cv mix that is the ratio of the specific heat for the mixture that will be calculated as 1.5 okay so why i need this because see isentropic efficiency is given once to apply the isentropic efficiency i need the actual or the ideal process 1 to 2 yes so process 1 to 2 yes is isentropic for an ideal gas this process is return as pv power gamma equal to constant okay now equation of state is pv equal to rt combining these two these two equations i can write the expression for pressure ratio p2 by p1 equal to t2s divided by t1 power gamma mix by gamma mix minus 1 do you understand so that is the relationship for the isentropic process please understand that in this ts diagram it is clear that the pressure ratio is same for the isentropic process which is ideal as well as the actual process in the actual process what is p1 8 bar p2 is 1 bar no pro problem in that but only thing is the temperature reached in the isentropic process is t2s and uh, in the actual process it is t2 which is higher than this that means your enthalpy change which is cp delta t for the isentropic process will be more so more work will be delivered and for the real process less work will be delivered because of the irreversibility so that is why the isentropic efficiency is 0.5 of the actual process wa by ws so once you calculate the isentropic work done i can calculate the actual work done because of the fact that isentropic efficiency is given to me so now i can fix t2 yes correct so p2 is 8 bar p1 is 1 bar so i can find t2 yes as from this the gamma also i know now okay so t1 is known t2 yes i have to calculate pressure ratio is known so from that i can calculate t2 yes t2 yes is 150 kelvin 
okay so 300 2 1 so t1 is t n 300 300 kelvin okay so due to the expansion temperature drops to 150 kelvin now isentropic efficiency is what actual work divided by isentropic work which is equal to h1 minus h2 divided by h1 minus h2s yes, which is equal to cp into t1 minus t2 divided by cp into t1 minus t2s yes, perfect gas so cp constant in okay so now which implies this is 0 0.5 0 0.5 is isentropic efficiency so i can calculate from this expression t2 as 225 Kelvin. So, go back and see here, here T2S is what? T2S 150 Kelvin and T2 is 225 Kelvin. So, you can see that the temperature difference comes down for the actual process only 75 Kelvin, but for the isentropic process is 150 Kelvin. So, you are losing the work because of the reverse irreversibility in the process. That is it. So, now we will calculate the entropy change. So, what is asked is calculate entropy change. For that, I have to find the mass. So, mass of the mixture. What is that? M equal to total number of moles into molecular weight of the mixture. So, this is mass in kg, this is kilo mole and uh, this will be what kg per kilo mole okay now what is the nt value nt value is 0.5 moles please understand it is given as moles not kilo mole so 0.5 divided by 1000 plus 0.5 divided by 1000 in kilo moles now it is in kilo moles okay into molecular the mixture is 24 so which will which is mass of the mixture will be equal to 0 0.024 kg. So, now what is delta S? Delta change of the change in entropy which is equal to M into Cp mix into ln T2 by T1 minus R mix into ln P2 by P1. Okay, the same type of expression was what we already used. So now I get this the entropy change as 10.113 Kelvin. That's it. So that is the sorry joule per Kelvin. Joule per Kelvin. Okay. So that is the delta S. Okay. So in this problem, you you should understand that the components of the mixture is given you have to first arrive at the mixture properties that is very important and uh, first of all for that I need the molecular weight of the mixture then I can calculate the specific gas constant and uh, now I can calculate the CV mix and CP mix for that I will calculate the individual CV values if it is mass basis then I can use mass fraction and use this mixture rule or mixing rule if it is in mole fraction, if it is per mole basis, then you have to use mole fraction. Okay. Now I have kept everything in the mass basis, so I can use sigma, yi, cpi, etc. Now gamma, there is no mixing rule for that. For calculating gamma, you have to use the ratio Cp mix by Cv mix only. You cannot say gamma mix equal to <coughs> sigma yi gamma a and all. So ratio find the <coughs> Cp and Cv for the mixture and take the ratio of that. Then for isentropic process undergone by an ideal gas it obeys Pv per gamma equal to constant here gamma is gamma mixture and the equation of state is Pv equal to Rt so combining two I can find the ratio of pressure as ratio of temperature power gamma by gamma minus 1. From that I can find the temperature which is got from an isentropic process that is T2S. Now isentropic efficiency is given using that I can find the actual temperature. Now the entropy change is got by using the integrated form of TDS relationship 
okay this is about the problem 9